This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What on earth happened? How did a character with this sort of presence turn into this? Towards the end of Dragon Ball and the beginning of Z, Piccolo was an extremely interesting character. Charismatic and tough with a host of conflicting motivations. And for many, Piccolo was their favorite character. Uh, despite his less than stellar performances as of late. And I want to know what you guys think. Is Piccolo's current position good, neutral, or bad? Click here. With that said, a common counter argument I've heard is that Piccolo is now after letting go of his evil ways. He's after adopting a new way of life. And while it might not be as interesting, he's found what makes him happy. And that should be enough for us. Well, to that I say... I hate this argument. It seems excessively reductionist to label it as simply a path Piccolo was inevitably marching down. Especially when you consider similar characters like Vegeta that are happy and also made the transition successfully. So why can't Piccolo? Today I'm taking an honest, in-depth look at the writing behind one of Dragon Ball's most popular and respected characters. One that has experienced a massive fall from grace, and in some cases, has been humiliated. He's the reincarnation of the Demon King. This is Piccolo. There isn't one simple aspect in the writing of Piccolo I can point to that's the reason for the downward spiral his character has experienced in recent decades. It's actually a lot more complicated than that, and in fact it's a combination of several easily overlooked attributes that make up his story and his circumstances. I'm going to paint a picture for you here and draw a conclusion at the end. And to draw that conclusion, we gotta start where all stories do, at the beginning. The 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai is a section of Dragon Ball's story I think is grossly underappreciated and sort of acts as a hybrid of everything that made Dragon Ball wonderful with strong flares of what Dragon Ball Z would ultimately become. And man, did Piccolo establish himself in this section. Having decimated the Z Warriors, sealed away Kami, and mortally wounded Goku during the battle, which, by the way, was the first to utilize a beam struggle and a giant bad guy throwdown against Goku. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. The Vegeta-Goku fight totally copied these two aspects from Piccolo's fight. But I digress. Piccolo's goal of eliminating Goku from this world in order to conquer it was all but assured. However, as often is the case, Goku was underestimated. At this particular point in the story, Piccolo is still facilitating the role of antagonist. And as is the case with many Dragon Ball antagonists, that is a title that one does not hold on to for long. And if they can't find the new role to occupy, they will be lost in the same space Ten Shinhan, Puar, Yamcha, and Chaozu have found themselves. Obscurity. However, the position Piccolo currently finds himself in at this moment in time isn't bad at all. It's actually a great one. And I say that because at this moment in time, he is the uncontested strongest fighter after Goku. And he still has his own individual goals with which to strive towards. However, over the five year time skip between the end of Dragon Ball and the start of Z, Piccolo doesn't do anything. And this I think was the moment that started Piccolo down this losing path. And this becomes immediately obvious with the introduction of a certain character. Vegeta immediately swoops in as someone stronger and someone that could potentially be in line with the good guys. Additionally, during this section of the story, Piccolo's character arc met a speedy, albeit satisfying, conclusion. However, with his arc having come full circle, it was now not immediately obvious what he would do next. And I think that's part of the problem, which resulted in fewer and fewer major involvements as the story marched forward. Feeding into the background, helping a decent amount with Frieza, even less with Cell, and even less again with Majin Buu. Now, he did receive training on King Kai's planet and a special fusion with Nail, and subsequently Kami. But in reality, this amounted to nothing more than window dressing. In other words, they were just mechanisms to stall within the story. And I'm still a little miffed that Kami and Piccolo's fusion didn't amount to anything other than that. There was the potential of some real emotional storytelling over the long term in my view. Looking back, they entirely wasted it. But let's back up for a second. In the Saiyan Saga, Piccolo establishes two aspects of his character that would stay with him forever. His strategic sensibilities and his strong relationship 
with Gohan. And boy, do I plan on talking about that in a hot second. However, unlike Vegeta, in many respects, Piccolo really struggled to, and in other cases outright failed to remain competitive with the main cast. And I know what you're thinking. No, I do not think Vegeta's Saiyan biology matters at all. That is a story mechanic that was written by Akira Toriyama, one that could easily have been omitted by him if he so chose. Heck, even if we ignore that, he's already given insane and absurd power boosts to a ton of other characters. With that said, however, because Piccolo's strength didn't follow Goku's closely enough, it resulted in his minor role in Dragon Ball Super and in the most recent film as a glorified homing beacon for the important characters, Goku and Vegeta. Still though, Piccolo's lack of strength is sort of a symptom, isn't it? A symptom of a much bigger problem. So, what's Piccolo's problem? Well, in a nutshell, it all boils down to the roles that are available within a series. In TV, a role is industry speak for a character or part to play within that series. The role of main character in Dragon Ball is filled by Goku and will remain such until further notice. So, that's not available. But one role that has had numerous people play it, that has tremendous value in screen time, is Goku's Sideman. The Sideman character in Dragon Ball is essentially Goku's right-hand man, someone that performs very well but can't quite get the job done at the very end, effectively creating the perfect scenario and stakes for Goku to step up to the plate and save the day. That is the purpose of this role and this has been Vegeta's purpose for the majority of his run in Dragon Ball, continuing to this very day. Once Vegeta began facilitating this Sideman role for Goku, we saw less and less of Piccolo and even Krillin. And if you think about it, characters like Krillin once occupied Goku's right-hand man spot, and while they were behind Goku, they competed extremely well in the story during that time period. Many of you might not recall this interaction from the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, but prior to Piccolo facing off against Goku in the finals, he fought Krillin, and Krillin managed to surprise everyone in how well he performed. However, in the end, he would come up short in his effort needing to leave it to the stronger Goku. Remind you of anyone? No. This is the role of the Sideman, and as you move farther and farther down the totem pole, you get less impressive moments and less screen time overall. In the Universe 6 tournament arc, Piccolo entered to fight Universe 6's Frost, and in competing he did better than we thought he would. However, much like the Krillin's Tenshinhan's and Yamcha's of the past, he had to step aside for his superior Vegeta. In other words, since the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, Piccolo has gone down from antagonist to sideman to Yamcha. At this current moment in time, Piccolo is on par with Yamcha's performance from the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. He has completely different sensibilities and personality, but his standing within the series hierarchy is that. But I hear you asking, why did Vegeta claim that role over Piccolo? Well, Piccolo and Vegeta are both former bad guys turned good, meaning they underwent a positive change arc. And these changes, while they're happening, are fascinating to watch as viewers. But if you were to compare the length of time Piccolo took to reach his conclusion to Vegeta's, you'll notice that Vegeta's story was much, much longer and filled with much more hardship. Not to mention, all of this story for Vegeta took place once Piccolo had completed his own one. Because of this, while Piccolo was static, doing his best to help out with the gang, Vegeta was under undergoing major changes to his personality, causing trouble for the main characters and overcoming his own internal demons. Translation, he was more interesting at the time. Additionally, from a character perspective, compared to Piccolo, Vegeta is much more likely to mouth off and get into trouble, meaning he's a much more active character naturally. And if given the choice between a stoic, silent anti-hero and a brash, cocky one, Akira Toriyama would be crazy not to choose the most active character to fill the series' character roles. This might be the biggest advantage Vegeta's character type had going for him, and that is the added benefit of being the same species as the main character, Goku. Meaning whatever shiny new form Goku achieved, Vegeta would technically be capable of mimicking in theory. And given how insanely successful Super Saiyan transformations were in the series, it meant Vegeta would, like Goku, be able to sell many more toys as a result. And that, more than anything else, is the name of the game here. However, I hear you clamoring. You said Piccolo's character arc came to an end, which took him out of the spotlight because it was less interesting as a result compared to the next in line, Vegeta. So when Vegeta's character arc ended, why didn't it happen for him too? 
Well, that's a great question, and you're absolutely right. His character arc reached its climax for the most part right in the middle of the Majin Buu saga. He said his goodbyes to his loved ones, and in a blinding flash of light, gave up his life for his family and friends. And what happened when he made his return to the action against Kid Buu? It became painfully obvious that he was not remotely on Goku's level anymore. And this is about where his character would normally have been recycled into the Piccolo position. But he got lucky. The series abruptly ended and was rebranded 18 years later. And that's not all. They retconned his character slightly in Dragon Ball Super. In the case of Piccolo, his character took a large hit in terms of the material he was given, particularly during the Majin Buu arc. And part of that problem was Gohan. Gohan's character role shifted dramatically with this saga. And because Piccolo's character had become intrinsically linked to Gohan, when his character wasn't given any shine, Piccolo suffered similar consequences. Additionally, since Vegeta's unveiling, there simply haven't been any new characters introduced that threatened his position. The closest really is Majin Buu, and he's not going to be doing it anytime soon. As well as that, given how established he is in the role now, it's difficult to see anyone else occupy it. He is so ingrained into this part of the series, the idea that there ever will be anyone as Goku's number two, other than Vegeta, will feel strange. Which, I would imagine, was the impetus behind this Dragon Ball Super spoof by TFS. Check it out. Why did you decide to pay Hit to kill you? <sighs> it is... I don't know. He just does things, you know? Things you can't. I can't go through life only knowing the same thing day in, day out. Oh, there it is! After 15 years, I just don't excite you anymore, is that it? You know, Piccolo wasn't like this when you came along. Oh! Well, that's what this is now, huh? Diversity in the cast of characters is important. The few glimpses we got to see Piccolo shine in Super were a breath of fresh air to me. He offers so much more aesthetically to the series than many might think. When 100% of your main cast are Saiyans, then things become very samey. I don't want to get bored of seeing Vegeta and Goku, and, and a great way of making their involvement feel more distinct and special is by including characters like Piccolo that look nothing like Saiyans and have vastly different fighting styles. I mean, look at this fight choreography! It's a real shame that much of this can be boiled down to Piccolo simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Having been born into a promising character role with tons of depth and potential for long-term main cast involvement, as the likes of Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan continued to transform into bigger and better versions of themselves, Piccolo transformed into a plot device, a babysitter, and a joke. Reflecting on Piccolo's character for this video was bittersweet. It was wonderful to revisit what is easily, in my opinion, the most underrated fight in Dragon Ball history. But as the story marched on, it started to become more and more obvious that Piccolo wasn't keeping up, finding himself in unfortunate situation after unfortunate situation, until all that he contributed to consistently were some funny visuals, sometimes. Culminating in a character that is a shadow of what he once was, a series that is less visually interesting, and a character that has regrettably been humiliated. Thanks for watching. Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is a powerful online platform that provides you with the tools to create clean, impressive, and professional websites with ease. If you need a website, build it with Squarespace. Their platform allows you to embed videos, which really helps your website pop. You can link your social media accounts, allowing you to post simultaneously to all of them. You can even purchase your own domain directly from Squarespace. They really are the one-stop shop when it comes to starting your own website. And the best part, you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com, and if you use the offer code TOTALLYNOTMARK, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Happy website building, and I'll see you all in the next video.